Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today we want to talk a little bit about VPNs, and we want to have an update on building your own VPN to access your own network resources and your own block lists through Pi-hole. Of course, you don't have to use the system through Pi-hole. It's just that uh, when we did this video and planned it, it was specifically asked how to route your VPN through your Pi-hole. So we're going to be walking through a tutorial on that. We are using the Raspberry Pi Zero here. If you're actually doing a VPN, I would probably recommend getting one of the newer Raspberry Pis with a uh, gigabit Ethernet port rather than the Pi Zero, which doesn't even have an Ethernet port at all. It will function. It will work just fine. But there are going to be a few limitations to it. But for the purpose of our example, that's what we are using. Let's go ahead and get started by talking about what is a VPN. A VPN, or Virtual Private Network, was originally created to access a local network from the internet. In our modern days, they are aggressively marketed for privacy. While they can be used to hide your internet activity from your ISP, it is possible for your VPN company to collect all the same data that you're worried about your ISP having. Ultimately, a VPN is a powerful tool when used correctly, but they could be a liability when not used correctly or when using the wrong VPN. The correct way to use your VPN is under these cases. Number one, if you want to break free of geo restriction. In other words, you want to access a site from a different IP address or even a different country. VPNs are excellent for this, and most of your commercial VPNs, like the affiliates I have through private internet access or through ExpressVPN, will allow you to do that. Secondly, you can use a VPN properly to secure your internet connection. If you are in a public network like a Starbucks, a VPN will encrypt all the traffic to the VPN server, and this prevents your web traffic from being watched by people that might be on that open network. Your web traffic, however, could be watched by the VPN server, and this is why it's important to trust your VPN. Number three proper reason is if you need to access resources on a personal network or even a local group network. If you are away from home and need access to your local network at home, or if you're away from your office and need access to the network shares in that office location, a VPN can help you take advantage of that approach, and if you're using something like Pi-hole, it can help you take advantage of your local block lists. Presently, we will discuss only our final point. We will use a Raspberry Pi to create a VPN into our network. If your network includes the block list, such as Pi-hole, you will be safe on the internet from those items in that list. You will be protected from the ads and trackers if you are likewise blocking those on a network level. Finally, if you do have network shares, your personal VPN will allow you to connect to those folders no matter where you are at in the world. Installing a VPN on a Raspberry Pi is easy. First, we need to make sure to have a Raspberry Pi OS, formerly called Raspbian. It works best without a desktop environment to save memory, so this tutorial will utilize the command line, so you will either need to set up your device with a monitor and keyboard, or you will need to enable SSH through the Raspberry Pi configuration, which you can get to with the command raspy-config. Select the interface options and enable SSH. Before you begin, make sure your Pi OS is up to date. To get started with the VPN, then use the following command. Use curl dash capital L HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash install dot pyvpn dot io and then bar bash. This is going to download the script and then it's going to run it. The script will install any necessary packages and it will also check for updates. So you don't have to have the system up to date, but I would highly recommend it. You will be prompted to understand that the script will install either OpenVPN or WireGuard VPN protocols. You can have your choice over which one. For this tutorial, we will be using OpenVPN because the technology is more mature and most Linux network managers already have plugins to make connecting to OpenVPN more efficient. 
WireGuard is a newer and faster technology, but it will require a separate VPN client to connect. And to my understanding, I've been told that WireGuard requires systemd, which is probably why I could not get it running on my one computer that I would actually use the system for. So that's that. The next prompts will inform you that your Pi needs a dedicated IP address. This means when you connect your Pi to your network, your router might assign a random IP address. You need to make sure that your VPN server always has the same IP address on your network. So you can manage that by setting up a static IP address on the Pi and by creating a static address in your router by reserving an IP address in the DHCP reservation table. I can't help you with that on this particular video because every router is slightly different, but if you do look up DCHP reservation table followed by your router's brand and model, you will find the information easily online. So our script is going to make things easier by letting you choose whether you want to set up a static IP address through your device or if you're going to do that on the router itself. If you select yes in this step, your Pi will be configured to always pull the same IP address from your router. It is better, however, to set a reserved address on your router so it doesn't randomly assign your VPN server to something else and cause a conflict that you are not intending. The next step is going to ask you to select a user you would like to use. If you are using the default Pi user, make sure you have changed the password. You can do this after the tutorial is finished if you have forgotten to change the password. In order to change the password, run the command passwd and then enter your password twice. This is important because you don't want to have a VPN facing the internet with a default Raspberry Pi and password. Once you have selected the user, the next prompt will ask you if you would like WireGuard or OpenVPN. As I said, for this tutorial, we are using OpenVPN. The next prompt screen asks about the installation mode. We are looking at three settings. Number one is the protocol. UDP is the default. There's a variety of different ways that uh, data can be passed across on the internet through different ports and protocols. UDP is generally what is used for VPNs. If you are unaware of that, just keep the setting the same, which is UDP default. If you're using a custom domain, this is going to require you to have a separate DNS service, a domain name, and you will have to know how to manage to point your domain name to the IP address for your network. This is the public IP address, not the internal IP address. But if you are setting things up that way, it can simplify things, particularly if your IP address changes, you can simply change it in the DNS service and all of the OpenVPN configurations will remain the same. If you are just running the IP address, you can keep this custom domain setting at none. And the features, the default uses modern features, and this is going to be appropriate for most people. The difference here is if you're using really old devices that may not support some of the more, more modern technology, then you're going to want to turn that off. But I would recommend not having a VPN open to the internet that does not have a lot of the modern security. So I would go ahead and keep modern features on and upgrade your devices if you need to. You can select no here to save all the settings, but I actually clicked yes to show you each of the screens. If you have selected yes, you will find a few new screens. One of these is the protocol. Again, use UDP unless you exactly know what you're doing and specifically have a reason for using TCP. For the port, I use the default VPN port 1194. You might actually want to change this for a VPN that is constantly listening because people will be probing various IP addresses with port 1194. In my case, I feel justified in not changing the port because I actually only keep my VPN on if I'm leaving the house for an extended period of time. Or, in the purpose of this video, leaving the VPN on so I can go find a public wireless access and test it out. You can use any port that is not already used for another purpose, but if you don't really know much about ports, you might actually just want to keep it at 1194. Changing the port could make your VPN more obscure by adding a layer of obscurity. But if you are using some port that is being used by something else, it might cause problems elsewhere. The next screen we're going to be asking if we're wanting to use Pi-hole as the DNS server. 
Now, there's a little note on this one. Even if you select this, it will not necessarily make PyHole running all of your DNS. I actually tested this. It turns out that unless PyHole is configured with your router itself, then it's actually not going to use PyHole. So I did actually have to set up my router to use PyHole as the DNS in order for this option to work. So if you select yes though, you are going to be managing your redirects with PyHole, but that might be something specific to my router since I'm using PFSense and it's a little bit more, uh, a little bit more of a robust router than your commercial routers are. Next, we are asked if we wanna add a custom domain. I clicked no and on the next screen it asks for my public IP address for the VPN configuration. If my IP address changes, I will have to change this value both on the VPN and on the OpenVPN configuration file that it spits out. So we will have to be careful about this, and generally this is not going to work super well if you have a regular dynamic IP address. In my case, with my ISP, I don't have a dynamic IP address, so I can just go ahead and use the IP. I could also, if I wanted to, grab one of my subdomains on one of my other DNS servers and use that and just update it as I go. Again, I'm not super worried about that at this point in time. Now, OpenVPN can run faster if you're using an OpenVPN client at version 2.4 or later. OpenVPN 2.4 was released in December 2016, so it is very likely you can select yes to get higher pass-through transfer rates. The certificate size, which is the next screen, will determine the security of the VPN server. Using a 256-bit certificate will be secure enough, but at the higher levels, it will just take longer for your server to generate the key and increase the install time. But if you are using something that is perpetually on and on the internet, you might actually wanna take that extra time and go with the more paranoid levels. The key will take a while to generate and the server will run through the install, but you will finally be asked about unattended upgrades. It is advisable to enable the upgrades but you will want to reboot the server once in a while. If it is perpetually on, a cron job running once a week to reboot the system would probably benefit you nicely. Creating a client profile. The installation will complete, but you will need to create a client profile in order to connect to the server. The client profiles are what is actually used to connect, not necessarily the username that you have built the system out of. The great part about OpenVPN is that you can export a single configuration file called a .opvn file and use that in combination with your password to access the VPN. To create a profile, run in the terminal pyvpn-a or you can do pyvpn add user. You will enter the following information. The name for the client, just enter the desired name. How many days should the certificate last? I usually go like a thousand something. This will give me a three year certificate. Probably within three years, I'm going to change up the software anyway. And so that'll be fine. I'll just regenerate new keys later. And then we have to enter the password twice to verify. You wanna make sure this password is complicated because if somebody gains access to the OP OPVN file, you will wanna make sure that it is a difficult task to get into your server nevertheless. The process creates a configuration file in the home directory for your user account, in our case this was pi, slash ovpns. So you can see here that I have the file pyholevpn.ovpn. That pyholevpn is the name for the client that I selected. So in the directory, this is at home slash pi slash ovpns. You will need to extract the configuration file from the server. If you're accessing your device on SSH, the easiest is to use the SCP protocol. Open up a new terminal window, and you're going to want to run our format here, SCP, which is the name of the application. You're gonna use the PI VPN SSH access. So in this case, PI is our user at the IP address that we have selected. And then you're going to go to the home folder, OVPNS, and then grab the file name. And then we're going to forward this to wherever we want the file to be saved on our device. Of course, make sure that you end with the name of the file, and I would probably keep it the same as you had on your device. And you can see here on our example, we're using the home directory, and then I have the DIR as a placement for wherever I want the file to go. In the case of my test, I just dropped it onto the desktop slash VPN. So in this case, as we said, Pi is the user, 
192.168.554 is the VPN static local IP address. PyholeVPN.ovpn is the name of the config file that is created. And tilde slash dear slash is the location where the file is going to be stored on my local computer. Connecting to your VPN. The first thing we need to do before we can connect to our VPN is to allow the PyHole to be accessible from the internet. To allow connections from the internet, you need to set up port forwarding in your router. Since each manufacturer is different, again you will need to research port forwarding on your particular device. The typical process is the same. Select the destination device or IP address at the port 1194 in our example and allow internet access to the device. Fairly simple. Once that is completed, you will be able to connect to your VPN. Connecting your device with OpenVPN is simple enough, but it will depend on your device. On Android and Apple devices, download the OpenVPN app, which for privacy-focused friends out there, you can get for Android off of the F-Droid store. On Linux devices, just make sure you have the OpenVPN plugin installed for your network manager. You can search up OpenVPN plugin and your desktop environment on any search engine online and you will be able to find your instructions. Many distributions like Mint and Ubuntu and other popular Linux distributions may already have that set up. Windows and Mac users, there are also likewise instructions for setting up OpenVPN clients. Let's go ahead and walk through an example. So in our example here, we'll be using MX Linux on an open public wireless network at the local library. I've connected it to the internet and agreed to their terms, so now I can go surfing away. I first test google.com just to show that the internet is working. I use this because my pihole blocks google.com as a simple canary domain to test if the block list is working and that the VPN is pulling the DNS from the pihole. Success. We are on google.com because we are on the internet but we are not connected to the VPN. So now let's go ahead and do an internet speed test. And without the VPN, I get 20.15 down and 11.29 up. Not bad for a public library Wi-Fi internet. Now let's connect to the VPN. On MX Linux, I need to follow the steps to connect to a VPN on the XFCE desktop. I would get similar instructions for Cinnamon and GNOME. We open up the Network Configurations tool and find at the bottom of the VPN section the Import Saved VPN Configuration. Click the Create button and open the pihole-vpn.ovpn file that we extracted from the VPN server above. All of the data should import and you will just need to supply your client password that we have created from above. Now you can set the VPN to manually connect or automatically connect every time your computer reaches an internet connection. We need to restart the browser to update the DNS cache. Trying google.com again, now we are not able to connect. Performing another internet speed test, I do see some degradation. We're now at 9.76, about a 50% drop, and 7.55 up, uh, a drop, although not as significant. I do want to stop here and comment on the degradation. First, this is actually the third time I've run tests with this VPN, and this is actually the only time I saw such degradation. It's possible that the network is being bogged down on this day that I perform the tests. Yeah, being a Saturday before the Ohio State game downtown Penn State, after all. Secondly, I want to remember that we were using a very low power device without a gigabit Ethernet port. If I were to be using a better Raspberry Pi, like a 3B or any of the 4s that have a 1 gigabit Ethernet port built in, it would work a lot better, I promise you. But even so, this is the first time I saw degradation utilizing this particular Pi Zero. Now that we have access the, to the internet, we can see that it is working. I want to first check the Pi Hole configuration. And you can see that I can actually get in there and I can make any necessary changes to my block lists. I can add things, remove things, do all the configurations that I need because as far as my network is concerned, I am doing everything from my network in my own office. It's really just like I'm sitting there, I'm just on a separate computer, even though I'm connecting via an open public Wi-Fi at the local library. Finally, I wanna double check that I can access my network shares. When I go to log in, I am able to access my shares that are being served up from my home office, so we are all good to go. 
Now, anytime I need a VPN, it's easy enough to turn on the Pi and connect to it, and I will be just like I'm sitting in my office. Of course, this does not help me with geo restrictions, but it will protect my internet connection and it will give me access to my network shares in my own home office. And that is why this is an excellent tool to use. So thanks for watching this tutorial. Once again, if you do need a commercial VPN to get around geo restrictions, or if you just don't want to set this up and all you need is basic privacy, you don't need to access your networks, you can actually take advantage of my VPN affiliate links. I have private internet access at tlm.li forward slash PIA, and I have ExpressVPN at tlm.li forward slash EV. So thanks for watching, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.